Hi, and welcome to Comfortable Lies. Disclaimer, the information provided by Comfortable Lies on Le Melancolique Phoenix uh, is for general information purposes only. All information on the site is provided in good faith. However, make no representation or warranty of any kind expressed or implied regarding the accuracy, adequacy, validity, reliability, availability, or completeness of any information on the site. Thank you. Welcome back to Comfortable Lies. I am your host, Harry, and uh, today we are going to continue on the saga of what the fuck happened. As I went over last time, this season is a uh, concept season, and I'm, I'm basically going to be staying on the one topic of uh, the 2020 novel coronavirus, which is COVID-19. Um, and uh, uh, talking about that and, and the issues that uh, had come from that. So where do we start? Well, we start with uh, the the story, the narrative, the thing that, the things that we were told, uh, starting back from uh, the beginnings uh, of what we were told. Not the real story. No, no, that comes a little later. But what we were told at the moment. Um, in early January, late December, uh, there were reports of a new virus in the Wuhan, uh, the city of Wuhan, China. The, uh, I'm, I'm not going to go through naming all the, the provinces and whatnot and what have you. Um, <clears throat> now, initially, uh, the story came out, uh, with this new virus that jumped from animals to humans miraculously because that happens often and and that's not exactly untrue but it completely ignores the fact that there was a giant virology lab in Wuhan China you know the stories about how uh, pangolins uh, uh, carried this virus over to humans. Someone ate a raw bat in a open, uh, open air meat market in Wuhan, China, and, and that's what caused this because it turned out that the, uh, the virus itself uh, was a mutation from uh, a virus that affects bats in China. So um, that's what we were told. Um, in late January, um, well, to be fair, mid-January, uh, the current standing president, the Orange Cheeto in chief, uh, uh, suggested that we halt travel from China, which would be considered rational uh, now that he's not president anymore. But while he was president, that was the most racist and xenophobic thing that you could possibly do, and it only encouraged people to hate Chinese people here in America. That was what was released by the news. That's what the uh, significant members of Congress were saying, that uh, uh, the president's racist attitudes were coming out in, in, uh, in this, that, uh, that he was blaming it all on Chinese people. And, and I don't necessarily understand where that came from, except for the fact that, well, no tragedy can go unpoliticized in the United States. Um, so at the end of January is when the travel ban actually started, and really the travel ban was more of a, if you're a U.S. citizen and you're outside of the country, you're going to be quarantined for 14 days. If you are not a U.S. citizen, you are going to be turned around and sent back where you came from. Uh, this got expanded to uh, foreign uh, 
people seeking green cards before uh, uh, re-entering or entering into the United States, all of those things were uh, put to a halt as well. Um, and uh, um, nothing but cries from the, the liberal side of the government. And when I say liberal, I mean Democrats. I don't mean, I don't mean um, leftists because, well, real leftists aren't involved in the government just like all the rest of us anarchists aren't really involved in the government. <laughs> so um, the reality is, is that um, uh, the United States government used uh, this to basically spearhead a, a giant campaign against racism, which really wasn't uh, the issue with the coronavirus at all. It was more of a trying to manage uh, a virus that we didn't even know whether or not it could spread from human to human at the time, but we were, we were warned to not take chances by the World Health Organization. Um, uh, by late February, uh, it was a full-on battle between uh, the, the executive administration and Congress as to what needs to be done. Um, uh, to be completely honest, uh, uh, the United States government followed the protocol, the executive branch followed the protocol that was put before it, you know, uh, get the, the, the departments that are involved with human uh, health, health and human services uh, involved, uh, create a task force, come up with a plan, and then uh, the expectation was Congress was going to, you know, say, okay, let's go ahead with this plan, but that never really happened. They were too busy concerning themselves about how they can impeach Trump. Uh, all through February, all the only things that they could really give a shit about, despite the fact that there was this oncoming uh, uh, epidemic disease, you know, according to the media, this thing that could you could accidentally leave it on a surface and a stainless steel metal surface, it would stay there for nine days, according to uh, uh, reports from from the CDC. But that's not important. We need to impeach the president because he's obviously a racist for not wanting to allow people from a high infection area to come into the United States. Um, in early March, mid-March, we started talking about the potential of shutting down the United States uh, economically. Um, and the reason why is because between uh, January 31st when the first case appeared in the United States and uh, uh, the beginning of March, uh, the virus had spread to almost everywhere except for the uh, Midwest of the U.S. Uh, there were cases in Texas, Florida, um, uh, all across the West and East Coast. Uh, there were deaths in Washington, California, Florida, Georgia, um, and uh, and this was becoming some major problem. Um, I'm going to leave aside the uh, the fact finding um, efforts that had happened uh, after the fact about uh, how uh, how cases were determined, how deaths were determined. Uh, as a result of the coronavirus, because that is a whole other episode. Um, the media response to uh, the coronavirus has been one of pushing a narrative of fear. And, and this is very important to understand that despite the fact of not knowing anything, the media had zero problems with releasing all sorts of theoretical and hypothetical information, covering up um, any studies that didn't follow the narrative that they were preaching. And, and that's very important to keep in mind. So there's that. The narrative from science over um, the time period of February to March and April 
was that the only people that were worth listening to were the people who were supporting what the government and the media were spreading. Everyone else was immediately dismissed. Um, the 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 debunked meme was just in like full swing because these were there were accredited doctors, they were licensed doctors who were saying, "Listen, I understand what you're being told and." what we're seeing isn't the same and every excuse under the planet it being anecdotal evidence small sample size um, but no one ever really put the proof to the pudding on what the government was saying there was anecdotal evidence saying that this virus stayed active uh, on on dry surfaces um, there was anecdotal evidence saying that um, um, that if you caught this, you were going to die, because it's not true. Um, uh, the billions of cases, as opposed to the millions of deaths, really tells you that uh, there's a lot to to be questioned when it comes to um, how the media, how the government handled the situation, and how the science community decided that politicizing this this virus was going to be okay. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention the congressional response to the virus outside of the what well, we need to impeach the current standing president and uh, 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 calling him just out, calling him a racist for uh, the attempt to close off the border to infected areas. Um, in late March, they finally started seriously talking about a relief bill for the citizens that which they closed the economy down on, um, which again was a, a highly politicized uh, event. They, they basically lambasted anyone who was like, listen, if you have a 99.8% chance of not getting sick from from this, why are we shutting down the economy as some sort of radical right-wing extremist and anti-science uh, denier, which, you know, is kind of weird since, if we're being honest, if you have a 99.8% chance of not really feeling the effects of the virus even if you catch it, um, if, what side of science do you think uh, you're on if you think that you need to go through these extreme measures to try and control it. That, just a thought, you know. Um, but they finally decided to start talking about a coronavirus relief bill for the citizens. And the House of Representatives in late March, uh, well, mid-March, passed a, uh, a bill up to the Senate that was blocked by Senate Democrats for them to review and add a bunch of earmarks to. Uh, for those of you who don't know, earmarks are how the Senate decides that they're going to loot uh, the Treasury for their own benefit, just, just in case you were wondering. Um, added on to uh, a coronavirus relief bill that was basically geared at getting money and medical supplies to medical professionals and money to uh, the public who is being pushed out of work due to economic shutdowns turned into a uh, $2.3 trillion bill, a $2.1 trillion bill, with billions being dedicated to things like uh, the Museum of Natural History, the Museum of Modern Art, um, the uh, um, uh, doing some cosmetic work to uh, 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 the National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. Um, there's tons of stuff inside of that bill that had nothing to do with the virus or helping people. And uh, just put a little red flag there because uh, guess what? It happened again uh, with the second coronavirus relief bill and it happened again with the last coronavirus relief. Uh, so that's where we stand with uh, where we started with this whole uh, uh, 
coronavirus COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, and uh, tune in next week when we talk about how the media and social media framed the arguments uh, on either side of this debate in order to make uh, conversation about coronavirus be as politically charged and divisive as humanly possible. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, again, this is Comfortable Lies with your host, Harry Felker. Bye.